Today in Documentary Studies, we turn to the research proposal for a documentary project. In this lecture, I want to provide an outline for the research proposal that will be due from you in the class, and also to provide key concepts for research. I'm going to try to do these two things concurrently. I think students find it very helpful and very meaningful, not only to talk about abstract concepts for research design, but to see how these kinds of concepts operationalize in an actual research proposal. Think about Bruno Latour and Steve Woolgar's title, Laboratory Life, colon, The Construction of Scientific Facts. The left side of the title tells us about the general research area. The right side tells us about the essence of their study. They propose that scientific facts certainly exist, but that they're also constructed in certain social settings, and that the validity of these facts are argued agonistically in a particular community. So to begin with, think about the title of your study itself and how it tells us the direction that you're proceeding. The abstract also is critical to providing for readers an overview of the study. I think it's not an introduction to the study. Rather, you should try in the abstract to have one sentence that presents each of the major parts of the study, and it is the background, the literature review, the objectives, the research design, possible problems and solution, timeline, significance, and references. The background is the first major part of the study. Here, you'll provide a general sense of the topic in question, and you'll narrow that so that we'll understand how the specific proposal for research that you're offering addresses, or rather, perhaps even captures that topic. Here, you may also want to tell us, narratively and autobiographically, why it is that you're interested in this topic in the first place. Then we proceed to the literature review. Here's where you put together articles that appear reviewed that summarize and substantiate that previous research has been undertaken on your topic and that the kind of research you want to do is needed. And by needed, I mean we'll further elaborate that topic, we'll tell us more about the topic under consideration. Also think as well how you'll organize your literature review. The research might be organized, for example, chronologically, from earliest studies to later studies, or it could be organized categorically by themes. If, for example, you were going to go to a chemical engineering laboratory and you were going to try to document how senior students made sense of unit operations, you might look at two kinds of research. The first might be a kind of research that told us that facts actually existed and that they were merely brought forth by the students. The second kind of research might imply the work of Latour and Woolgar, that scientific, that scientific facts may exist, but they're also constructed in social settings and that they are argued for by certain groups. In that kind of a study, then, we might find out that it's best to present the literature review not categorically, but by concept of research. The objectives of the study tell us what it is that you want to find out. And they should be described in deliverable behavioral terms. What it is that you're going to do with photo photography what it is that you're going to do with transcribed interviews, what it is that you're going to do with film, what it is that you're going to do with presenting information to us on the World Wide Web. But the objectives are critical to the study in that they tell us what your hypothesis in the study might be, what it is that you're offering to us. Now let me spend a bit of time on the research design. This is, I think, the heart of the proposal for a documentary project. And we've talked about these concepts before, but let's review them again. A construct, if you remember, is not just a concept. A construct is a mental model of a particular phenomena that you're going to capture. And that particular phenomena is described in behavioral terms, in capturable terms. So what is the construct that it is that you're developing for the study? Now, in 
voices of the poor crying out for change, the construct of poverty had to be elaborated in the study before the qualitative structured interviews could be executed. So the focus of the study identified these aspects of the construct of poverty, well-being and ill-being, as defined by the experience of poor people. So the study conducted by the World Bank used lurkal words and concepts of poor people to elicit their ideas about security, risk, vulnerability, opportunities, social exclusion, crime, and conflict. Two, problems and priorities of different groups and how these had changed. Three, role institutions, specifically the role that public, civic, and market institutions play in people's lives. And finally, gender relations, changes in gender roles, decision-making, and violence, perhaps, within a household in the community. So the focus of the study was poverty, but the construct operationalized into these categories, well-being and ill-being, problems and priorities, role of institutions, and gender relations. And thus we see it is how this particular study operationalized the concept into a construct with a number of different variables. Now, those variables that we just reviewed were thought to give us an idea of the predictor that were going to tell us more about the outcome of poverty. That is, the more questions that were asked about those constructs, the predictor variables, the more that the researchers would be told about the outcome variables. Validity questions. Now, I've, I've offered, there are many types of validity, but I've offered two here that will be most meaningful to students of documentary studies. The first is construct validity and addresses the qualities contributing to the relations between the idea of a, an, a predictive variable and an outcome variable. In other words, are those questions asked by the World Bank group, again, the four questions of well-being and ill-being, problems and priorities, roles of institutions, and gender relations, are those four questions going to result in capturing the phenomena of poverty? Now, those four questions were based on previous experience of the researchers, but they were also based on a literature review. So you see in this part of the research design that the literature review is necessary in helping you design the study because the literature review increases the construct of validity of the study by helping you to understand the ways that the predictive variables might be expressed. As well, validity might be addressed with content validity. And that addresses whether the study or the tools used, sometimes called the instruments used in the study, capture the construct under examination to begin with. Now, the World Bank used a series of structured and semi-structured interviews in the field to elicit people's reactions and responses to the predictive variables that were operationalized in the questions, the construct. So you'll have to address the idea of designing a construct, articulating variables, predictor and outcome, and the variables should be based on, perhaps in some ways, your own experience, of course, but more fully upon a thorough literature review, the validity and how the issues of validity have been addressed, and both construct, the relationship between predictor and outcome, and the content, whether the tool you use is going to be able to capture the construct. In the case of the World Bank, there were questions that were, that were designed based on the predictive variables. In your own study, they may be the use of photographs and how photographs will capture um, that will capture the content of what it is you're trying you're trying to investigate, and reliability, of course. How is how will it be that others might be able to find out what you've found out in the same way? Will your study prove not only be valid, but will it be able to be a study that is reliable? As well, the idea of a sampling plan. Now, turning again to the uh, to the World Bank study, voices of the poor crying out for change. Their sampling plan, if you recall, was intended to capture 20,000 poor men and women from 23 countries. 
And the countries involved in the study derived from geographic areas, Africa and the Middle East, Eastern Europe and Central Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean, and South and East Asia. And then countries were identified on each of those geographic regions. So the sampling plan is a kind of blueprint that specifies how participants in a particular study are to be selected. Time is, of course, important here. Have issues of time been addressed? I will be able to tell in your research proposal whether you've been too ambitious in your research design and whether you need to prune that back by getting an idea of what you think you can accomplish in a precise time period. As well, the idea of the tools of the study. Has an overall research strategy been proposed? And you'll recall in this course we're emphasizing writing, taped interviews, photographing, and as well we're looking at film and the use of the World Wide Web. And we may also be looking at triangulation, and that's multi-methods that might be used to capture the phenomena. And of course, methods of analysis. How will the information be analyzed? How will the information that you have be brought together in a way that is coherent and that will allow you to achieve the validity and reliability that you seek? Now, as we move into each of the kinds of studies, those having to do with writing, photography, oral history, film, the World Wide Web, and as well as some of the examples we'll have in this course, I'll provide more detailed outlines about methods of analysis. Possible problems. Frequently, this part of a study is called the limitations of the study. But I want you to address and articulate each of the possible problems that you think you're going to have with the research, to express these and articulate them honestly and explicate them fully, so that you can then talk about potential solutions. That is, have each of the possible problems been analyzed honestly in terms of its solution? Put another way, if you raise five possible problems, you have to identify five possible solutions of the piece. For each problem that you raise, it's best that you raise it before someone else, in this case your instructor, would so that I can get a better sense of how it is you intend to solve these problems. A timeline should be realistic. It should really extend in some ways precisely, even including days of the week, for what will be done in order for you to be able to execute your study in a reasonable amount of time. And precise milestones should be set along the way as well. By what date, for example, would you have your sampling plan complete? By what date would you be able to be in the field? How long will you be in the field? And how long will you allow for analysis? And of course, the idea of significance. Has the significance of the pros of the research been presented in some detail? Why is this research important, not only to you, but important to others who will read it? And has the contribution of the kind of research you're doing, based on the literature review, been determined? Finally, at the end, we ask that references be presented in a recognized format. Most students will use APA format. In some cases, in this class, students will use MLA, or the format of the Modern Language Association. But the use of an articulated, prescribed format that's endured over a period of time for citations is absolutely important in this kind of research. The best general guide in this course for citing of sources is the publication manual of the American Psychological Association for those who will be dealing with APA format. What to remember about the research proposal? Well, it's important to me that the proposal be well designed early in the course. Without a well designed proposal, most of what you do will just be casting about, and that will waste your time and, and uh, at the end wind up with a very poor research project, a very poor documentary study. So, design is very important, and I've pulled forth certain elements of field research 
specifically field research having to do with qualitative research that will allow you to design very carefully a field project. Plus the honesty of interpretation. How it is that you're going to not only find out what you're going to find out, but interpret what it is that you found out so that you'll be able to see on one hand what is really there and on the other hand test what you've seen by methods that are both valid and reliable. And these two things together, the importance of design and the honesty and the interpretation, will result in the insurance of integrity. And that's really what I'm looking at in these projects. I'd like them to be something that are groundbreaking. I'd like them to be stunning in what they present. But regardless of what they are and what they're not, they should be honest studies conducted by students, executed in a reasonable amount of time, and brought forward with a sense of honesty.